My name is Michelle Jones and I am a teacher at Glenville High School. However, for the summer learning experience, I am working at Guillen Academy. The focal point and essential question that I would like my scholars to answer is what impact did the Underground Railroad have on the cities economically, politically, and socially? What I wanted to do was capture the essence of the museum so they could truly get a feel for what the underground was like through photos, videoing, um, using primary and secondary sources. So that is the goal of our particular project. It's very important uh, for the scholars to learn this type of history because I feel that we don't concentrate enough on it. We only use Black History Month as a time to cover it. However, this is very integral into how Ohio was uh, designed and how the cities developed, and that's very important to know. Students only think that slavery issues occurred in the South, but it's very important to understand that they were a part of the North as well. So that's, that's just why I think it's so important. I think uh, this museum preserves is the culture. They get to actually see and grasp what the safe houses look like. They understand the importance of the role that the conductors play versus they learned that the bounty hunters not only captured fugitive slaves, but also captured the conductors. So it's important to understand that. And also you'll see that not all white people were considered to be bad and supported slavery. Some of them were abolitionists and wanted to see freedom. And so I think that's very, very important because our students tend to focus on if someone was white, they uh, supported slavery. And that's just not the case, especially in Ohio. I just think that that is very, very important for them to understand, especially at a museum like this. Uh, my name is Tom Buckley. Um, I'm a volunteer. I've been uh, volunteering here for three years. Learn a little bit about the Underground Railroad in this area. Uh, I know uh, history is not a big thing around here. Uh, I always told people that you need to know what happened. History is what happened. Good, bad, or indifferent, you need to remember what happened and learn from it and go from there and not try to hide it. Harboring a, a fugitive slave with a, with, with a felony, um, they didn't keep records, and you, you're, 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 you're not going to write down how many fugitive slaves you helped if you're, if you're going to go to prison for it. Um, and after the Civil War, I think they figured it done, it didn't matter anymore. And a lot of, a lot of people just did not bother documenting what had happened. And it's just like how a safe house was marked, where part of that, you know, we're going on rumors and old legends and stuff, we're just guessing at parts of it. I've always thought that uh, there was more uh, use made of markings, you know, carvings on uh, fence posts or whatever, uh, stuff that did not survive. Like I said, it, it's hard to find because it was not documented that well. It's our history, not just, not just African American history or, or Ohio history, it's American history and we should all learn from it um, and it, it never hurts to learn something new. What I would like for them to empathize is to understand how at this time period the people uh, supported each other and they corralled together to get to freedom. A lot of times when they're looking at a time period of slavery, they just say, oh, I could never be a slave. I, I would have gone out, you know, and just been free. But they truly understand the struggle 
because it was a struggle to get to freedom. It wasn't something where you just said, hey, I want to be free, let me go free. And also, for them to take away more pride in who they are, because this is a story that is always evolving. Throughout the time, we are learning different um, places throughout the country that actually were in support of the freedom of enslaved people. I think that they need to grasp that Canada, which is on our northern border, played an uh, interesting role because most of our students, regrettably, have never been outside of Cuyahoga County. So they get to travel, look at the towns, see a different environment outside of a metropolitan area. So I think that is so important and they need to take away, hey, this, this is what it looked like. Small towns, fields and dips, and not everything is so modernized. When you look at the stores that are here, they have very old signs. Pepsi-Cola, like I haven't seen Pepsi-Cola since I was a little girl. Can they even equate that that's Pepsi, you know? So, um, and the stores, the stores um, are very antiquated to say the least. And this is still what people in this town have to utilize. Also, the demographics of this town. To know that um, fugitive slaves came to a town where it is predominantly white is a very, very, um, that's very, very puzzling to me because it's, it's like, you had to use the grassy area to get free. So you're hiding out in um, kind of like forbidden territory. And if someone sees you on their property, that's it. Um, so I think that that's a very, very interesting. And also they learn about the Quakers. And um, I'm from Shaker Heights. So Shaker Heights is a settled town by Quakers. And I think this, that's important for them to understand that uh, the Quakers were a major part in freedom all throughout the United States. And he's not just a man on the uh, oatmeal. It is a day-to-day -day struggle, especially in the times that we are experiencing right now, politically, socially, um, and also um, how it is impacting our um, pockets right now. It is, it's, it is very expensive to live because we are experiencing the pandemic. What I would like for them to take away from this is that freedom is not always free. Anything I tell you to do, you got to do. So I'm going to take you and I'm going to be weary of you. I'm not going to be as scared of the women because we can control the women. But for my men, I'm going to have to chain you up. And so this is what I'm going to use. This chain is going to go through these little rings and they have rings all the way down and these are ankle shackles so one of your ankles is going to be chained up and your other ankle is going to be chained up to another one like this and you're going to be connected to the man next to you this ankle is going to be connected to the man next to you over here this building was owned by mr john w anderson he was from Virginia. He used to own horses, breed horses. But he realized that he could make more money off of uh, people than he could off of horses. So he moved his family to Maysville, Kentucky, and he built a building like this. This is the second building he had because there was a female in there, first building by the name of Peggy. Peggy got out and she set the first building on fire because she didn't want nobody else to be chained in there with him. But Peggy got caught. And because Peggy burnt down Mr. Anderson building, the state of Kentucky, because that's where this building was at, they hung her for that crime. 
and because they destroyed Mr. Anderson property by hanging Peggy, they turned around and paid him $400 because that's what he paid for Peggy. And then he built this building. And twice a year, during the planting season and the harvesting season, Mr. Anderson would take anywhere from 35 to 40 people and he would march them down to Natchez, Mississippi. From Maysville, to Kentucky to Natchez, Mississippi is 750 miles. You walk 20 miles a day for 35 to 40 days and then you were sold in cotton fields, sugarcane plantations, and the rice plantations one of the worst areas you can do. Cotton fields, you're working from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. Rice plantations, they got to flood the fields in order to grow the rice. In come the gators, the snapping turtles, the poisonous snakes, and the mosquitoes that carry malaria. With the sugar, you cutting those canes down, they're spiky, just like that cotton, but more. It's tearing your hands up. You think it's hot now? Have anybody ever been down south, south? Like Alabama, Mississippi? You got that heat, you got that humidity, and you working from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. That is what the life was, was a slave. In 1834, Mr. Anderson let a man down. So what he would do is come in here in the daytime because he wants to make the best money he can off of these people. So he's gonna treat them well and make sure they fed and everything because they gotta take that big journey. So, he would come in and he would let these men down, a couple of them, and exercise them before he lock them back up to make sure that you can make that journey. Well, one day he came in in 1834 and he let the man down and the man got away. And something in that cornfield spooked the horse and the horse bucked and Mr. Anderson flew off the horse and his head went through a corn stalk. He got killed instantly. He left behind a wife and five daughters. They couldn't collect his property. Why, ladies? Because they weren't what? They weren't men. Women could not collect property. So the oldest daughter had to put an ad in the paper. Is there any man out there that want to marry me? My father died without a will. You can have his property. Oh, my daddy was rich. If you promise to take care of me, my mother, and my siblings. You think she had a problem finding a husband? I don't care what she looked like. We talking money. You think the men didn't come to bury her? They did. A whole bunch of them. Whoever she chose to marry, he decided that he was not going to go into the business of the father. But what he did was he kept everybody in this building. He didn't let them go. And he planted tobacco. And he built a barn over this barn, over this plant uh, uh, pen. And he hung tobacco in here and that's why this building is still in the shape that it's in because it was hidden from the outside elements. Enslavement time people started running away that's where the Underground Railroad came into. They were sending patrollers out, paddy rag rollers, but you know what these people were? Policemen. They were your police and they were there to capture you because you were an escaped enslaved person. And you were wanted, dead or alive. Ohio was a free state by one vote. We know it was in the early 1800s that he built this building, John W. Anderson. And he built it because he wanted to be rich. And he was rich. He sold people into slavery. He would hold them here until he had about 45 people and he would march them down to Natchez, Mississippi, which was 750 miles. They walked 20 miles a day for 35 to 40 days and then they were sold down south. So this is our oldest artifact that we have here and it's an original. If 100 people tried to run away, maybe only 10 would have made it to safety. That's how dangerous it was. They didn't want their kids to be crying and stuff. There were some people that the males took the wives and the kids with them. We do have records of that, but mostly male men ran uh, before anybody else would run. 
College Hill, which is not too far from us, they had about 30 some houses as safe houses. Springboro, which is about 45 minutes from us, they have 28 sites that they still have standing today. Sharonville had houses, so we really don't know. I mean, because it was such a secret, unless the uh, somebody has that house that's been in that house for a long time, or you have people still living in the area that were told, you know, that house had secrets, you know, or it had tunnels, or it had a secret place, and they find something like that, you don't know, because it was such a secret, because they know if they got caught, the punishment would be losing everything you had. And we know that from some of the abolitionists that lost everything. They went to jail, they lost their families and stuff like that. So Van Zant, he helped enslaved person coming from Kentucky, took her all the way to Canada in a false bottom wagon. Uh, but he uh, tried to do it again and he got caught. So everything he had, they took away from him. They even excommunicated him from church. That's how dangerous it was. And he went to jail, and um, he got sick in jail, and a reporter went to interview him. And they said, Van Zandt, you're getting ready to die up in this jail, all for helping uh, enslaved people be free. If you had a chance to do it all over again, what would you do? And you know what Van Zandt said? Nothing. I wouldn't change a thing. My name is Novella Nemo, Manager of Educational Outreach. African Americans built America. Anybody else that came here that was um, disfranchised or were being victimized, they got payment for it. Learn about the history and learn that they tried to take these people out and they survived. They survived under some of the harshest conditions that has ever been given and they still survive. So these are your ancestors. They suffered and died so that you could have the freedom that you have today. What are you doing with it? How are you using it? Let's make America great again. What does that mean? America was never great. I mean, if you look at it and the way they treated everybody that came here. I mean, look, they came here and they took the land away from uh, the Native Americans. That wasn't great. They treated the African Americans like they were nothing. That wasn't great when the Japanese came and they had World War II. They encamped them. That wasn't great. So when was America great again? When was America great? So how are you going to make it great again? So if you're talking about making it great for just one set of people, then you're taking away everybody else's freedom.
Latin student. To me, this program is all about learning the background of like about where I came from, how I got here, what happened, and what went down. Because a lot of people, when you hear the Underground Railroad, a lot of people don't know what the Underground Railroad is. They automatically assume it's a railroad, but that's nowhere near what it was. And re really what it was, it was a community to help people in need gain freedom. I learned like Ohio really had like a lot of stuff to do with the slave, slavery. How like people escaped from Ohio to Canada, from Virginia to Ohio. A lot of a lot of routes to the underground railroads. How people transfer and so a lot of that stuff. So when I first went there, we went upstairs. The um, I think his name was John. I forgot his last name. He was speaking to us in his uh pers pers perspective, in his opinion, and I respect that. Um, he said a lot of useful stuff. We took a lot of pictures to understand what the underground railroad was. And the Underground Railroad was for people to escape, not to stand by and just be slaves anymore. They're, they're, they're tired, they don't want to be slaves. And um, people helped them from the north and south. They helped them, transport them to Atlantic Ocean, I think it was. And, um, and um, yeah. What I've been able to take away from it is uh, more experience about the Underground Railroad than I, than I had before. And um, I had I had a couple questions about it that I um, didn't have answers to, and I was able to find the answers to. Something I've taken home from these food trips are stories about what happened and certain methods that slaves used to escape, and like certain different ways that the underground railroad was used. The first field trip that we had went to, we basically looked at artifacts and the information and the houses, the slave houses that were built to help them. And I feel like we had learned more information from the second one because the museum was bigger for the second field trip. And we had somebody that told us more about how she kind of related to going through it. But she told more about slavery and more facts about the coffin, about the cubs, about how many slaves did not make it, about everything. And I feel like I've learned more and felt more from the second one than the first one, but we still learned a lot, but not as much. It was a big help because it could have been the other way around. It could have been everybody against black people, but it wasn't. It was people that was actually helping, actually cared. It's okay to, to know what happened in the past and not to always like some, no offense, y'all colored people white people, some people, <laughs> some people actually is with, with black people. Some people are just not. And some people, all white people are not the same. Some are just supportive and want to support us like that. And um, you should know. We, something that I took to heart is when we went to the Cincinnati um, Museum, they had like this house that was built. One that I took to heart were, was the coffin when they would pretend that they were having a funeral just to like escape to freedom. I took that to heart a lot because I feel like no one should ever have to go through that much trouble. It should have never really been in the first place. I found the quilt that's in the, as soon as you walk into the museum, it's a big quilt and it's full of different patterns and designs and everything. And then the slave pen, I found that interesting because they was all just slaved up and it's 12 year old men that's just being up there and then women and children just on the floor and then it's nowhere for you all walking until early in the morning until late at night just working and going in and out like a routine on the loop. Comparing the past slavery to today's slavery, um, I feel like the only thing that has really changed is that they don't really have like well custody, like they can't just take us anymore. But I still feel like there are certain forms of slavery, like the way that they have a, have it set up, like the way they try to control people and the mindsets that they try to encourage people to have, those are different forms of slavery to me. I think this would be important for future students because most students don't know much about slavery. And like me, most students probably got questions. If you are being interested in doing this program, you should take your time to more realize, like open your eyes to 
this is real and this is what we have been going through for years. And that it's really no stopping. It's stopped a little bit, but it's still little secrets that everybody doesn't know. That could help or break the world. A lot of people, and I'm not trying to say this like out of out of terms or whatever. A lot of black people think that being in the streets and being in gangs and stuff is like, that's it. And that's really not it. It's kind of like a brainwash. That's not what it needs to be. That's not the way that it has to be. People get into like gangs and stuff. It's like, it's like a system. It's a setup because then you go to jail and jail is nothing but a different form of slavery. I would want them to learn and understand like, just because that's what we had to go through, it doesn't mean like you're less of a person because a lot of people think like a lot of people are insecure about their skin, skin tones, their hair. And it's like it's really not as bad as people make it seem. And with the underground road and stuff, I really want to say like just love yourself because it's like self-hatred and there's no need for it. My name is William Davis. I am the assistant principal for Gann Academy. I am the uh, site supervisor for the summer learning experience here at Gann Academy. So one of our flex credit courses is called the Documenting the Underground Railroad. It's a course that we're using this summer to give students a totally unique experience. It's not a part of the regular curriculum during regular school year. So it's something unique in itself that they get to go out and, be, and get the exposure that they need from places like the University of Cincinnati, Oberlin College, so many other destinations that they'll go documenting um, what our ancestors, African Americans, had to go through during that time of slavery. So I think it's a, a unique way to get them to learn, to get them to be excited, and that key word is exposure. The things that I hope they take away from the program, Documenting the Underground Railroad, is to try to get in touch somehow, some way, with the spirit of our ancestors. What the laws were like during that time, how slaves had to find a way to escape, and how other people, not just uh, uh, whites, but the majority of other people try to find a way to secure them, take care of them, and ensure that they can get to slavery. Not everyone was a proponent of slavery. So I think that's important for them to know, and that's why diversity is so important today. If they can embrace what our ancestors went through then, I think they'll understand the importance of diversity today. You know, seeing the change, seeing how they were shackled, trying to understand what their mindset was, being stripped of their language, their religion, their culture. If they can come into contact with that, then I think they'll have somewhat of an understanding of what, of what slavery was like. Um, but that, the brutal conditions that our ancestors went through, no one can really embrace that because it was 400 years of that. But today, just to recognize it and to appreciate that we overcame is something that I hope they get out of this class. My name is Damon Holmes, and my title is Principal of Gin Academy High School. So I think uh, the biggest thing for students with the Underground Railroad Project is to teach resiliency. Uh, to see how much uh, people have been able to accomplish despite odds being placed against them. Our kids are, sometimes have a lot of obstacles before they even get to school, before they wake up, and they have to see, uh, work through those obstacles, maneuver around them, go through them, go under them, over them, whatever they have to in order to find success here at Gin Academy or any other high school that they go to. And I think this is uh, really uh, close to home for our students as uh, you know, most of our ancestors uh, traveled the Underground Railroad and it gives us a, a sense of self and a sense of what it took in order for us to be where we are today. All students, you need to uh, understand what it is that you're uh, interested in, find your passions. If you're, if you're finding out about your, your history, how you came to be is one of your passions, then you should, you should take the class. Uh, it's important that um, learning has relevance for all students. And so if there's a passion, if there's a concern, if there's something they just want to learn, that they're curious about, you know, foster that inquiry, foster that curiosity, and learn as much as you can. What has impressed me most about the students as they um, are completing the program is that they have mastered the competencies that we um, have introduced them to with the profiles of a graduate. The social and cross-cultural empathy, I believe, was one of the most important competencies because it allowed them to see different perspectives and to see how those perspectives were in contrast to their own. People from different generations, they got to hear their thoughts and the students also shared their thoughts. With the academic mindset piece, 
They set their own goals for their group. They determined what they wanted to know as a means to meet the um, essential question that we had set up for our documentary, which was what impact did the Underground Railroad have on the cities and communities politically, socially, and economically. And I think they found that information most um, important and are able to take this story back to their peers and their um, relatives and other generations about what actually happened in um, a locale that they're from. To Kayla McDay because she came to our program not um, really focused, kind of unsure about what the program would be about. And as a result, she has soared. Um, she came up with a lot of great questions to ask of the tour guides. She enjoyed taking her own footage, creating her own memories from what she, what she saw and observed. And she came back ready to work, ready to delve into getting the documentary on its way. The lasting impression that I hope that this documentary has on students and other people that view this is that African Americans have a story to tell. Sometimes that story has been very limited in its scope. However, now we get to see how important Ohio was in shaping who African Americans are and what they aspire to be. It just doesn't stop when we look at how they got to freedom. This may be something that our students want to study further on in college because there's a lot more to uncover in the story about African Americans. We tend to stop at maybe like the 1980s where it's kind of like they made it, they've come through the civil rights movement and then it's over, but it's still always more to explore. And um, I hope that more students like history. History is fun, it's a story about you. It is not just something buried in the textbook. So I hope that they get that. Start also with the older generations, start to question what I've learned in the past. Is it accurate? What other perspectives are there out there? because we always get a very limited perspective as we're growing up and taking uh, history classes. It's like black versus white, Asian, Indian, and that's it. And there's nowhere in between. But now here's a story that can encompass so many different facets of people and religions. For any student that will be interested in joining us next year, I would say don't be afraid to venture out to the unknown. Um, go see cities that don't look like Cleveland because those smaller cities played a very important role in the Underground Railroad as well. So come with your eyes open, ready to learn and gather new information and different perspectives.